Hi there, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis. And I wanna talk for a moment about the process that, of how we're trained in society to conform to this perceived norm and how it creates anxiety. And I'd like to start with a story about elephant training. Now, I don't actually know for certain whether this is true or not, but I think the image is useful one in this context. So what I've heard is that when elephants are being trained to work with people, that they start off by, the trainers start off by placing heavy chains around the elephant's legs and they peg them to a spot close by. And as the elephant is trained, it knows like the, the chains prevent it from moving very far. So it over time learns that it can't move very far. And so it, just doesn't try as much. And as it gets used to that, they give it more freedom of movement, but the chain still blocks it so that it can't go very far. And over time, they reduce the, the size and the heaviness of the chain, and they allow it more movement as long as it's cooperating, as long as it's doing what the, the trainer tells it to do. But the chains are still there, it's still restricting its movement. and over time, they, they reduce the weight and the size of the chain so that it becomes a leather band. And then eventually, as it's more and more trained, it can they can just put a string around the, the elephant's leg. And just the presence of the string creates a feeling that, that creates that association with, oh, there's something around my leg, which means I can't move very far. And so it doesn't try. So even though the elephant could run away very easily, the string is not going to prevent it. The training prevents it from even trying to run away. It thinks that it can't. And when we're very young, we are given strong rules about what we can and can't do, and a lot of what we can't do. And when we're very young, that does make sense because we genuinely don't know the difference about what, uh, between what's safe and what's not safe. And so we're told no a lot, and we're told you can't do that, and no, you're not allowed to, etc. And when we do things that we're not allowed to, there are consequences. Sometimes it's natural consequences. You stick your finger in the light socket, you get a buzz that hurt. Ow, you're not going to do that. Sometimes there are punishments uh, by adults around us. Sometimes it's social punishments, like you say an awkward thing and everyone looks at you funny or the kids ignore you, or they insult you, or they throw rocks at you, whatever it is. But we're, we're taught as we grow up that certain things get rewarded and certain things don't, and certain things are punished. Um, and later on, as we grow, our society doesn't have structures that helps our moral development to get past that initial right wrong this is good this is bad this is okay this is not okay there are actually a lot more gray areas there's a lot more flexibility there's a lot more that's dependent upon circumstances that's dependent upon well in this situation that was a bad thing but in this kind of situation that might be okay or in this situation that's actually a good thing that's praiseworthy that's helpful that's useful um, we don't have that built into our society and so a lot of us autistic and not stick with these ideas of it's either always good or always bad. It's always wrong to do this, or it's always you're supposed to do this under all circumstances. And those those categories of good, bad, or right, wrong, um, or always, never, they don't really work in the real world. They they don't conform to all of the infinite variations of life and of society. So those associations that we formed when we were very young are still very strong. And what happens is that a lot of us 
I have this conflict in our brains between the the right wrong that we learned and this situation that doesn't match that perfectly and it can create anxiety that there can be a feeling of desperation of I don't know what to do like this is something that I was told was right but it's not working or this was something that I was told is wrong but I feel like I need to do that and but if I do that then I'm gonna get punished or something bad's gonna happen and if you look at it really logically, you might think, okay, there's no one who's actually going to punish me, but it'll feel like that. Or maybe people will react badly. It's not like, it's not that my dad's going to say anything bad, but my coworkers might, or they'll, my boss might, I might get in trouble with my boss or something bad's going to happen. So there's that conflict between what we learned and what, we're experiencing and that can create a lot of anxiety and what i think is the most helpful at this point is to start looking at those beliefs and they are beliefs about what's right and wrong start looking at them examining them like is this absolutely true can i think of any circumstances in which this wasn't used this way and it actually worked out better. Do I know examples of people who have done something differently and have been praised for it instead of vic villainized for it? Start looking for the counter examples. Start looking for the ways that it might not be true. And it might genuinely be true sometimes, but not always. And being able to live in that, I, I I'm tempted to call it gray area because that's a common term, but I don't think it's actually a gray area. It's not like it's morally fuzzy. It's just morally complex or pragmatically it's complex. It's, it's not about everything is always right or wrong. It's about we live in a complex world, a world that doesn't always fit neatly into these categories that we're taught when we're two years old or five years old. And so playing with that a little bit, allowing yourself the freedom to explore that, even if it's just in your head, you don't have to go out and, and live this yet. Just play with it in your head and see what comes up for you. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I don't necessarily have any more conclusion than that. I hope that this sparks something interesting, that it engages your curiosity. All right, have an era wonderful day.